<clears throat> Thank you for joining me today. This is Pastor Mario. Today we're going to study the Bible and I hope you can be blessed. We're going to start a new series called If My People and it is based in 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. Yes, every Sabbath starting today, we're going to study the same text but different words. And today the title is, If My People. And before we go on the Bible, how about if we pray? Father God, we thank you so much for another day of life. Thank you, Lord, for inviting us to open your word and to study. Bless my brothers and sisters and friends that are in their houses. Be with us as we learn more about you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If we look in our Bibles, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, I will give you some time. Look at your Bible. I hope you have your Bible with you to study God's Word. Look at your Bible, and I hope you're ready. And the Bible says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin, and heal their land. As I say, we're going to study this text, and today we're going to study only three words. If, my, people. Let me start with a story. A little girl. This is a story very sad about a little girl that her parents didn't want her. And she was taken to an orphanage. Since she wasn't pretty, nobody loved her. Nobody wanted her. She longed for a family to adopt her and love her. She thought about it day and night. But everything she did seemed to be wrong. She tried very hard to please those who came to see her. Every time a new family will come, they will always find something on her that will prevent them to take her home. But all she could do was always push them away. One day, the director of the orphanage came to her and told her that a family would love to take her home with them. She was so excited that she was jumping and crying of happiness. But the director of the orphanage warned her, and, she, and he told her, Well, let me tell you something. They just want to try and see what happens. So probably this won't be a permanent thing. But she didn't care. She was just excited and, hap and, and happy because she thought that she would do everything possible for this couple to love her. So she went with the family and started going to the local school in the town that they were living. She started to settle, and she was very happy. And life began to open up for her, even if it was just for a little bit. But one day, a few months later, she arrived from a school jumping and running to the front door of the house where they lived. No one was there. But she could see them in the middle of the hallway her old suitcase and her little coat on top of it. Standing there, she looked at her luggage, and little by little, everything began to be clear for her. She understood what that meant. They didn't want her, and she didn't even suspect it. What a sad thing. What a sad story. They didn't want me. What a sad statement, knowing that people don't love you and that you don't belong to someone, it is indeed a very sad thing. There are many Christians who enter and leave through the doors of the church with a feeling that no one loves them, not even God. Yes, it is true. I remember when I was little, I used to go to church, and I always hear this beautiful song, Jesus loves the little children. But every time I was going back home, and I just doing kid things, 
my mother would say, God will punish you. I love my mother. And I know that at those days she didn't understand the real character of God. But I was confused. How a God who loves the little children could destroy the little children. And let me tell you, it was so much conflict in my heart and my mind when I grew up that there is something in my heart that I could not express. There is no more wonderful feeling in the world that belong to someone, belong to a group of people, to a place, to know that people accept you, that people love you, even if you look different, even if you talk different, even if people maybe don't like everything you say, but at least they respect you because they love you. What a wonderful feeling. And value simply is just because it's you. Do you sincerely believe that God loves you? Why is it that many people in the church don't think that God loves them? Do you believe that you are special to God and that you belong to Him and that no one can replace you from the heart of God? Let's study together what God means when He uses the expression, If my people. First of all, we need to look at our greatest struggle. The greatest struggle in the church today is that people don't believe that God loves them. Like many, a certain lady one day say, God scares me. She did not feel loved by God, but rather she had been thought since she was a little girl that God needs to be, uh, we need to be afraid of God. Well, let me tell you, the Bible says many times that fear the Lord. But what is it God, God really saying in those words? That you need to be afraid of God? No, I don't think so. Let me ask you a question. Do you respect your parents? I hope you do. And I hope my children respect me. But let me tell you this. Do you respect your parents because you are afraid of them? Or because you love them? I hope the second. This is exactly what God is trying to tell you. I want you to love me and therefore you will respect me. Fear in the Bible means respect. And that's exactly what God wants from you, that you love Him. And therefore, when you love somebody, you will respect. And that's exactly what happened with this poor lady. She was wrong in her thinking that fearing God wasn't not really related to love, but it was something that she had in her heart. She was scared of God. Because in her mind, an idea of a perfect God trying to make perfect human beings that doesn't tolerate failure, coming to this God in search of love, acceptance, and understanding was simply impossible for her. But where, where all this thing started? I hope you have your Bible with you. We're going to study several texts so this, this sermon can make sense to you this morning. I want to invite you to look in the book of Exodus, chapter 19, verse 5. Look in Exodus 19, verse 5. I hope you're there. Let me read it for you. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. What a wonderful statement from God, right? Don't you think? But do you notice something interesting? This is a promise, right? But are all the promises of God 
just a promise that everybody can claim it doesn't matter what what you do well let me tell you something promises from God they are all conditional and I'm gonna explain you very clear in this text exactly the same way we are studying second chronicles this text if you notice use two words that it makes it conditional if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my commandment there is a comma and then it says then you know your language you understand grammatic and grammar you will see that this combination if and then is a condition so that means that we as a human beings we need to do something in our part he says that if we obey his voice and keep his covenant then we shall be a special treasure for him so how can we do this listening to the voice of God and if we let ourselves be being guided by God through the Holy Spirit keeping his commandments his covenant this is kind of like an agreement a contract and then conditional you will be his special treasure what a wonderful promise that we can be a special treasure for God God made a covenant with his people based on their obedience and as a result of this they will be a unique people for God remember what happened with the Israelites they were chose for for God not because they were better than other nations but because God needs to let the whole world about who God was the Israelites failed unfortunately because they thought that they were unique and special in a different context but let's take a look at the book of De Deuteronomy 14 verse 2 Deuteronomy is in the Old Testament I hope you're looking in your Bible Deuteronomy the Word of God says for you are a holy people what the Word of God say that you and I we are holy people to the Lord your God and the Lord has chosen you to be a people for himself a special treasure again above all the peoples who are on the face of the earth Wow so God is calling us holy people well last time I checked my temper sometimes is short sometimes I'm not the best Christian what about you do you consider yourself holy but look the Bible is calling us holy because we are separated for a special purpose from God we are chosen by whom chosen by God isn't that, that amazing that even though we are not perfect but God is calling us and his word holy people to be unique people two are not the same right well a lot of people say when they look at pictures of my brother oh you and your brother are the same are you guys twins well no my brother is two years older than me and yeah probably he might look alike or I might look alike like him because he's older than me but let me tell you he is totally different than me there is not a person not even twins even if they look alike are the same we are totally different I'm extrovert my brother is introvert we are so different within all other people you are unique you are different you are special but not because you have something that makes you special but because God chose you to be special 
Do you understand that? Now, probably you still don't get it. Let's take a look on the book of Psalm 100, verse 3. Look at your Bibles. Psalms 100, verse 3. You got it? All right. The Word of God says, Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who has made us and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. What a beautiful song. The Lord is God and He is our Creator. You, have, you did not make yourself. We have a Creator and we are His people again. Remember Psalm 23? I know you do. This is one of my favorite psalms. And probably for many people, they even remember by, by heart. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall know one. He's our shepherd. We are the sheep. But what about another text? So you can have a more clear idea. Isaiah 43, verse 1 and 2. Look at your Bibles. We're going to study the Bible today. Isaiah 40, 43, verse 1 through 5. But now says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia and Siva in your place. Since you were precious in my sight, you have been honored, and I have loved you before, and I will give men for you and people for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your descendants from the east and gather you from the west. Wow, what a wonderful text. This is how much God loves us. Can this be a God who does not love you? I don't think so. But some of you might be thinking, Oh, wait, wait, Pastor. But this text is clearly speaking about the Israelites of all. How do we know that this text is referring to us now? Well, that's a fair question. It's in the Old Testament. Now, how about if we find some text in the New Testament? Hebrews. Look at your Bible, the book of Hebrews, chapter 8, verse 8 through 10. I'm going to give you three seconds. Nah, five seconds. Look at your Bible. Hebrews, chapter 8, verse 8 through 10. You got it? Let me read it for you. Because finding fall with them... He says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers and the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they did not continue in my covenant. And I disregarded them, says the Lord, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Oh, this is a very interesting text. But I know that you probably still kind of confuse. So I'm going to give you another text. Look in your Bible, 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. 1 Peter, 
chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. You got it? Okay, let me read it for you. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who have not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. More clear than this? This is wonderful. Peter is saying that before we were not, but now we are. Thank God that He is calling us His people. Those of us who one day decide to follow Jesus no matter what color, race, ethnicity, language, nationality you are, or background you come from, we became God's people. Not by human will, by but God's will. What a wonderful thing. If you are His people, you don't have to tremble when you come to Him. You come in a bold way. You go and ask God, knowing that He is calling you part of His people. He is our Father, and our Father loves us. I know you probably can argue with me about it. And you can say, well, there are parents, especially fathers, that don't love their children. And it's true, and it's sad. But let me tell you, you have a Heavenly Father that is never going to fail you because He loves you. I would like to invite you for another text. Romans chapter 8, verse 15. Romans chapter 8, verse 15. You got it? Let me read it for you again. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cried out, Ava, Father. Wow. So we are being adopted by God, and now He is telling us that we can call Him Ava, Father. Do you know what that means? Abba Father means dear daddy. Have you ever hear have you ever heard your kids calling you that way? Daddy? How do you feel when they call you that way? Beautiful, right? It feels like they they have this connection with you, that they want to be close to you, that they want to be cuddled, that they want to be part of you. And that's exactly what God wants. He wants to be closer to you. He wants you to call Him Daddy. Dear Daddy. Always close to His children. Because He is always close. Uh, I know, you probably, you are thinking, but where is He now? Well, I don't have a real answer that I can give you. But I know that all the things that are happening around us, God is still in control. And He knows and His all uh, wisdom what is, what is happening. And he will, he will bring something good out of this disgrace. I know because you can look and you pass. You can look at the things that happened in the past and you will see that God is still in His throne. I would like to tell you something. Why I'm preaching this to you? Because I can tell you that I experienced this in my own life. When I, be, uh, when I was probably 16 or 17, I loved the Lord. But I couldn't understand how can a God that loves us can punish us. Because that, that was the way I was raised. And let me tell you, many years passed, and Jesus found me. And He told me how much He loves me, how much God loves me, and how much the Holy Spirit loves me, and the angels. 
And I was able, finally, to understand that. Now I'm happy, I'm free. And one of the things that I know, that I'm not perfect, but every single day, I ask God to help me go through this, to this life, to all the things and the affairs of this world. But you see, all the things that are happening is just an indication that Jesus is coming soon. And He is calling His people to do something amazing in those last days. That's why we are studying this text. Because we will discover what is it that God wants from us. He is already calling us His people. If my people, we are His people. Don't ever forget that. God is love. Not merely because He says that He is love, but because He makes the word love an action thing. By dying for our sins and caring for us individually, God awakens love in us. And by this means, he is able to save us from our sins. Because of God's perfect love, we do not need to be afraid. Least of all, of God. Though His grace, which enable us to be like Him, we are able to have confidence in the judgment. There is nothing to be afraid if we remain his people. I would like to close with one more text. Jeremiah 31, verse 3. Look at your Bibles. Jeremiah 31, 3. I'll give you five seconds. Jeremiah. You got it? Let me read it for you. The Lord has appeared of all to me, saying, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. What a wonderful promise. Do you believe that God loves you now? Do you understand how much He loves you? Even though sometimes people reject you, even though sometimes the churches are not so friendly, even though sometimes your parents seem to be uh, 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 upset of you, even though sometimes you feel like you're always fighting with your wife or your husband, that your kids don't love you, God loves you. He wants to make you understand that there is nothing that you can do in order to remove that love from His heart and His mind. But He is inviting you as His people to obey Him, to follow Him. We have a human part that we need to do. And this is something that we will study next Sabbath. I hope you understand that this promise is a conditional. This is something that we need to understand, especially in the times that we are living. This is the time where we need to be closer to God more than ever. Those things that are happening around us are just the very signs that we've been waiting. And this indicates that Jesus is about to come. And this is a time where we need to come back to the Lord. I would like to tell you something else. Jesus came to die for you and me. And He's coming again to fulfill His promise. I don't know you, but I'm tired of this world. People are dying. People are suffering. I want to be with Jesus. I hope you want to be with Jesus too. Would you like to invite Him today in your life? You want to be part of His people? A unique, a special one? Not because you are unique and a special one for something that you can do, but because he chose you because he loves you because he is inviting you to be part of his people would you like to accept that offer i hope so
Let's pray together. Father God, thank you so much for that wonderful invitation, for being an awesome God that loves us so much. Help us to believe this promise. Help us to be able to understand that because you love us, you want to save us. Help us to be ready for the second coming of Jesus. This part that we studied this morning, if my people, it is the part that we need to understand that we belong to you. But I'm very sure that the text will continue and it comes with strong language. Help us to be mindful and to understand that you are calling us for a revival and reformation and a change of attitude in, in, a, in a complete way. Bless my brothers and sisters today. Bless uh, my friends and friends that are joining this video. And thank you so much for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you can have a wonderful Sabbath. God bless you and see you next time. Take care.